Hi, my name is Ethir Yakub, and I would put rosemary, black pepper, sage, thyme, figs, and freedom in my jam. Returned. It is the return of the Immigrant Jam podcast with me, your host, Lucy Pohl. We are here. We're in a new studio. Those of you that aren't watching, you can't see these insanely big, comfortable chairs that we are in. It's a beautiful day. I love you so much. Thank you for being here. Congratulations on making the best decision of your life. Listening to this podcast without further ado, I must introduce our guest today. I love her so much. One of the funniest women in the entire universe. Yes, this is true. I've known her for a long time. She's one of the OG Immigrant Jam live show performers. She's hilarious. She's beautiful. She's awesome. She's cool. She has an album out called Denied Entry. Fucking check it out. Please put your hands together for Miss Etheria Koo. Thank you. Woo. So much. I love that you're hyping it up. Woo. 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 <laughs> these chairs Woo. are also yeah, very hypeable. These chairs are amazing. Bouncy. I got comfy. I put my feet up right away. This is like an apartment. This chair is this an is apartment. This is bigger than most New York apartments. Yes. This And more comfortable. Yeah. Oh, yeah. 100%. Exactly. Way cleaner. Yes. I like it. I love. I think we're just gonna move in here. I think so. We live here now. You are from Alabama, like that's where you grew up. Uh, yes, I was born there. I grew up there and in Palestine. So I, it's a, you know, as one does, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Tell us what that was like. Um, just going back and forth. You mean or Everything. growing up? I mean, gr- growing up in Alabama is already a weird, crazy thing. Crazy, yeah. Especially for people like me who grew up in New York. Yeah, you know, feels like that's more crazy to me, right? Than Palestine. I know. You know what I, mean? I know. I know. It's weirder. Um, yeah. Definitely scarier. <laughs> yes. Yes. Um, honestly, I I guess when you're a kid, and because I moved back and forth while I was like going through all the formative ages like my I was six months when I moved to Palestine then I moved back to Alabama when I was five and then I moved back to Palestine when I was seven then moved back to Alabama for elementary school then moved back to Alabama uh, Palestine for like eighth and ninth grade and then moved back to Alabama finished out high school college and then moved my ass to New York as quickly as I could um I wanted to leave Alabama for a while and it's just hard when you're Already, like, I don't know, I just always felt like a fish out of water there. Mm. I felt like New York is different. So, like, New York, you know, everyone can, it's kind of like the, you know, they say it's like a melting pot, but it's really, it's like all the others, like, that came here. Like, yeah, I need to fit in somewhere. Also, just be anonymous and people don't really care. And I like that in New York, like, nobody's asking you, what are you? Where are you from? Like, you're constantly made to feel like you don't fit in or belong. Um, here you mean or in Alabama right yeah and I just never felt that anywhere else I thought you were gonna say here you're caught like everybody doesn't fit in that's true we're like the misfits the fringe yeah Yeah, nobody really yeah exactly and by by that we all fit in in New York I always think it's funny when you see people move here especially from places like you know Alabama or somewhere else in the country and then their style like changes within like six months to a year you know they're all black they went from yeah. like wearing from paisley like or like yeah, yeah. Like, you're like oh, okay now you actually you know you got timberlands and uh, well it depends on what part of new york it gets right. moved to or people think that it's like gossip girl or like I'm right like, yeah um but did you yeah. so you felt like a fish out of water in, in alabama alabama and but did you have that feeling in palestine as well no it's the only place i feel like i truly belong really like still from now? A, yes okay like very much especially now but um i would say but even just from a like psychosocial level of like the actual meaning of belongingness like i looked it up and i was like yes this like need to fit into this community because and i just feel like this is where i belong um not to say like I, I feel that in New York mm-hmm. too, but in a different way. But it's different when you feel like, okay, here's like 
unquestionable like your tribe and people like that your your language your food like you know just people that kind of understand this part of you that mm-hmm. maybe other people don't and in Alabama it's like they don't get either side like my liberal beliefs they don't get my you know being international what foreign. do you mean they don't get your liberal Can you beliefs believe, well, <laughs> Alabama what are you talking about I mean it, it, since then it's gotten I think way more liberal i know like birmingham where i grew up is a democratic it's a blue city so it's like a little blue dot within the red so i guess it could be worse it could be from like some you know bumfuck town right Uh, but i think it's so interesting that you say that you feel like you belong in when you're in palestine because a lot of immigrant kids have this problem that like they don't belong and they feel like they don't belong anywhere anymore like yeah i have that a lot of people talk about that when they go back to the country where they're supposed to be from, then they're like the American. Right. And when they're there's here, that too. They're, there's you know, that too. too. Absolutely. So I think there's a little bit of that. Maybe because I I think if you live there, it gives you a little bit more sense of like belonging and I don't and feel rooting. Like I belong but there at all. That's interesting. Maybe because yeah, you why, left it as a child. I wonder because me and also because yeah. my mom's not German. And I think that has to, a lot to do with it too. Yeah. You know how much your parents sort of like leave their That's, their culture and everything yeah. behind or how much they continue to you know live it in, right even in the new place right you know but i do i think it's so interesting because there's so many different experiences absolutely yeah. i think like palestinians also because we're nationalistic and very right. much like okay like we you know, our parents like really instill that sense of culture of course, and yeah. values in us that like for me i don't really necessarily identify or fit in with like an Arab like just Arab yeah. but it's like okay Palestinian specifically or I don't necessarily identify like I grew up Muslim I, that has never been an identity for me like right. um mm-hmm. it's been more like centered around like nationalism um and which when yeah. when which makes total sense when you're persecuted exactly. of course you're going to take on us even stronger oh, sense identity yes of that identity yes i mean ironically like much like jewish people exactly. and that's why it's like exactly. obviously you know we yeah. know like we you know i relate to that struggle very no, much and as that, well that's how i didn't grow up i'm we're jewish but my mom's jewish but i didn't grow up religiously at all yeah but because of the persecution that happened to my you know grandparents you have a stronger a strong, sense yeah. of that absolutely. identity. Absolutely. Absolutely. I totally get that. Yeah. Absolutely. absolutely. I think that makes sense. And even like, I think all immigrants, when they come to this country, do tend to like double down on their culture and beliefs because they're scared their them, kids yeah. are going to become American. I mean, that definitely for my parents, it was like, oh, don't become too Americanized. Right. I mean, especially in Alabama, it's like they don't want me to become yeah. Alabama like, <laughs> Guys, Thank you God. moved to Alabama. Don't become Americanized, but right, you moved right, to Alabama. Right, right, right. Seriously, the like the most, <laughs> I guess, like, I don't know, American-ish place. But um, yeah. it's, and they, yeah, I don't know. I think because they formed their own community there and they're not like my parents, like they can live in their own little bubble and community. Whereas we, as the kids have to be exposed and right. school and everywhere, like go yeah. out and be around different, you know, people. But they can sort of live in their own little bubble. There's those families that like totally leave everything behind and they don't even teach their kids the language because they don't want, you know, any trace of them being different or other, you know, othered or whatever. And then there's the immigrants that like, you know, really, like you said, double down on it and and kind of continue living that way. My, My dad doesn't even really speak English, for example. Yeah. And I'm like, but he's lived here, right? I mean, his... he goes back and forth, but yeah. still, like, we've been here for, like, 30 yeah. years, you know? And, it, like, now that I'm a U.S. citizen, it pisses me off. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I'm like, come on, dude. Come on, like, speak you know? American. But why did your parents go to Alabama? Um, well, my uncle knew a family from Palestine that had been living there for a while. And then people just go where you know people, right? They're probably like to them, Alabama, like, I don't know. What is Alabama, right? There wasn't Google then. They were just like, sure, sounds good. (laughs) Oh, no, they thought it was close to New York. Probably. They're like, 
good. We could drive to New York. Exactly. <laughs> Shit. That's close. Yeah. I do have family in Jersey. Like lots of Arabs live in Jersey, and right. like which I don't know after being in Jersey if that's any better than Alabama, no, uh, like, I especially agree. the I Arab mean, areas. I'm sorry. Like I was no. like I'm kind of glad I grew up in I Alabama. Agree with you. I get shot on all the time for being from Alabama, but that's why I'm like I'm not like it's not like I feel this like sense of belonging there. Right. It would be weird you because claim they Alabama ma- at all. You don't have an accent at Thank all. Thank you. Like, no Southern accent. I think that was conscious also just not was developing it? it but again because I I didn't speak English for the first five years and then it came back like when I lived in Palestine and then moving back here and then moving back there I was pro- and going to like international schools mm-hmm. it probably like faded also what's funny is when I went to school in Palestine they made fun of me for being from Alabama of course <laughs> Because like, hey, like, everyone was from Chicago and New York and they like repped hard. Even and there? New- yes. Oh, the Americans yeah, made fun the of you? Palestinian Americans, oh my, my god, classmates. That's so funny. Oh my God. I'm wow. like, oh my God, I cannot get away from this. <laughs> oh shit. This is in- <laughs> Alabama is so quintessentially in outside of the U.S. I feel like Alabama Everyone knows, yeah. is like this, like it's like like the wildest place. Yeah, like the most American place. Yeah. Even my dad knows where Alabama is. Right. You know everyone's I mean? heard of it, not for good reasons, yeah. but everyone's no, he- is heard about it. Can you tell us? For people listening, what Palestine was like growing up, like growing up there when you lived there, what it was like. So I think a lot of people don't know. You know what I mean? Well, it's not what Fox News is telling you. I'll right. tell you that. That should just go for everything. Yeah. Anything that <laughs> yeah, exactly. in, general, in general. In general. Yeah. Um, I mean, I the so as soon as we moved there, um, there was like the first uprising happened in, in Palestine, between Palestine and Israel. And then when we moved there a second time to live, the second uprising happened. So I think it's us. It's my family. <laughs> but every <laughs> nice. so it was volatile every time I lived there. Mm. But it was like, I don't remember a time that it was actually kind of, I don't know, peaceful. But it, I think that made me like probably develop an even stronger sense of like nationality. And uh, besides that, besides the political situation, going to like my, my city, like Ramallah is kind of like a mini New York City, mm-hmm. honestly. So to me, New York makes way more sense because it's chaotic. It's busy. Taxis like yeah. shop like it makes way more sense to me. Like New York, when I first visited when I was like 17 or 18, I was like, oh, this is kind of reminds me more of like being in Palestine um, totally than anywhere else. So, right just like a busy metropolitan yeah. place and taxis and everyone's foreign here anyway like it, it kind of makes sense and i loved it because um you just i just felt like i had more freedom to come and go and like mm-hmm. it wasn't like the same probably things that my parents were scared about in america like that could happen as like not as you know uh, um you know, political danger aside, like just the regular stuff of like growing up as a teenager and things weren't as scary to them. So I felt like they were and and it was so small and everyone knew each other. Mm -hmm. So it just felt like um, kind of easier to come and go, make friends, go out. Like, especially as a kid, you just as a teenager, you feel like, oh, yeah, I can go and you don't need a car. And just Mm -hmm. like I really loved it. It gave me, gave me the same sense of like aliveness that I feel in New York of just like just a lot to do. It's loud and the food is great. And um, and, and yeah, I, I'm still in touch with a lot of my friends there that we all like after we graduated, a lot of us like went back to our respective states or like in the U.S. Cause, um, but I still have friends and family that live there and I try to visit as often as I can. I was there like a couple of summers ago and um, it was just cool. And also they have like the best vibes of like restaurants, bars, like cafes. Like they're all like, I'm like, if this was here, people would be paying like up the ass for like, you know, the, the type of the setting atmosphere. and vibe, yeah, atmosphere. Mm-hmm. I'm like, Americans aren't very, cause you go anywhere in like Europe or wherever. Like, I feel like they do such a better job or like Latin America, like there's just more of a atmosphere of like coziness and comfort right and people and it's very like people oriented and community oriented right right. whereas yeah yeah. and you know the u.s is so individualistic Mm -hmm. that that makes it hard so i think that contributes to that sense of like community and belongingness did you ever consider as like an adult living there again i could yeah i 
In Palestine? Yeah. Oh, yeah. I was like, definitely not in Alabama. No. But <laughs> <laughs> even though my parents, that would make them happy because they like go back and forth too. But um, I would, I would. If things were different and if like I had the freedom of movement because I'm an American citizen, but I also have Palestinian ID. So when I go there, I'm stripped away of any American rights and just treated like a Palestinian, um, which is not good. Uh, spoiler alert. And uh, so I can't go anywhere. I'm like basically like locked into like my one city. I can't go anywhere. Do, can, can you talk about that a little bit? I think a lot of people yeah. don't know, but I'm not that like it's yeah, on yeah, you yeah. to teach people no, about this. No, no, no. I'm happy to be... talk about it, especially yeah. now. So exactly. Um, basically, I can't go into I can't travel through the airport to the Israeli airport. I can't go to any Israeli territories so how do you get there then uh, i have to go through jordan okay. and then cross the border and there's two borders one for um american or foreign nationals and one is like for uh palestinians okay. so it's a lot more of a hassle to get there um and you cross by by car or by, by car bus? or bus yeah. like uh, if you have like the extra money or like the luxury of paying for a car to take you and not have to take like three buses get searched take another bus get searched. literally it's like a joke you could like drive through in, a, in an hour but like it could take you all day to get there just because like the all the searches and like Those security checkpoints, checkpoints okay. security yeah. yeah and they make you like get on a bus get off a bus get searched get off another bus like i did it when i was younger it was like a nightmare and now like to go in or out, i think you can pay a little bit extra and the taxi driver will like you could take one car mm. or two cars so i think search that one yeah car and then, exactly okay. so um but there's no freedom of movement there's no um, so once you get to yeah. ramallah like in your case so you i get through jericho leave. Yeah. Yeah. So I so basically the West Bank, I mean, it's not a very big area. But yeah, once I get to Ramallah, I mean, there's like a few cities surrounding it that I can go to. Mm -hmm. But we're landlocked. You know, can't go to the beach, can't go to Jerusalem, can't visit the holy sites. Like I would have to apply for like special permission mm -hmm. um, to the Israelis to be able to go. Um, there's checkpoint like my my parents uh, or my grandmother's village. uh we have a house there and there's like every time I go, there's another checkpoint that pops up, like mm. all like also illegal checkpoints and that just, you know, no one's stopping them from cropping them up, like popping up anytime. Mm. Um, when I was there, they like closed, they like locked down our village. I hadn't been there in like five years. And then just to go and like immediately like you go from like America where like at least you you think like you have some sort of semblance of freedom to like a place where you're just like now it doesn't matter who mm. you are. It doesn't matter what citizenship. If you also have a Palestinian citizenship, you're fucked. Um, and then like having like uh, soldiers like outside my village, like point their 8K-47s in our faces and then be like, and for me, I lived there. I survived like airstrikes, like uh, personally to our house and, and our neighbor's house. So like to me, it was like, actually, this is re-traumatizing watching it. Somehow mm. living there didn't, uh, sorry going back to visit wasn't as re-traumatizing mm -hmm. as like now seeing it through the news mm -hmm. because mm -hmm. now i'm when you're going through something you're all you're thinking about is survival i ha i used to have a joke like that um that third world countries like this there was a study that they don't actually experience ptsd and i'm like yeah i'm from palestine that's because we never get to the post and post-traumatic right. stress disorder right, 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 and right. i think that's actually true yeah, because yeah. you're just I trying to totally survive true. right totally, you don't yeah. have the chance to like reflect yeah. and think you're back still collecting you're still, trauma yeah you're still collecting <laughs> yeah. it so now yeah. watching it i'm like crying and like feeling re-traumatized but right. even having like going through checkpoints having soldiers like you know point at guns in my face i'm just like just got to survive. Right. And then also I was like, if I die here, at least I'm in my homeland. So be it. Like, I would rather die there than here or in Alabama. <laughs> <laughs> oh, shit. The thing, I was just with my family this past week um, and over the break. And you would think like I was like feeling so bad. And I was like, maybe like you think that you could like process or feel better when or commiserate i'll say when you're with people mm -hmm. who've like experienced the same thing or feeling the same thing now but what i noticed is all of us were trying to just keep it together so mm -hmm. that we don't fall apart and cause the other person to fall apart mm -hmm. and like there have been a couple of times i'll just break down crying and then i'll realize like oh no now i'm triggering them right. 
to cry and I'm like no 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 yeah we're, we gotta stay strong and like do that and then the minute I got on the plane I just started crying because I realized I wasn't able to process with them mm. because you're still kind of under that same duress and then when and I imagine that's what like PTSD and trauma is like it's like kind of like you don't have it's just delayed processing of your trauma right and and not being able to um like ex experience your feelings in real time mm -hmm. um which is really kind of scary so now i feel like i feel like i can cry away from my family mm -hmm. because i don't want to upset them further because i know everyone's experiencing the same thing and just trying to be as strong and compartmentalized it's not like we didn't talk about what was going on constantly but right. at the same time it was just with the same like level of like new like neutrality as now because like if i'm like there's a part of you that's like scared to truly feel what you're like seeing and and to really take it in because mm -hmm. if you do you might just be completely like distraught and there are days like i'll allow myself for like for five minutes to be distraught and then just like gotta pick yourself back up and like keep going i usually like I'll journal, I'll write. I used to write poetry and stuff like do like ways of expressing myself. I do comedy. I'm finding it really hard to find words that can even mm. like remotely express what I'm feeling. It mm. feels so you know when people say they're like beyond words, like I've mm -hmm. that's I'm like no word truly can capture this kind of state of emotion and i even have that like emotion wheel like for therapy is like for journaling where it tells you all of the different like there's like a zillion emotions on there um and i don't find anything expressive enough or descriptive so that even makes you feel a little bit more like frustrated because you're not able to find grasp the word mm -hmm. to to get you to like really because when you say something it it helps relieve it right and it's mm -hmm. like even in uh in neuroscience they talk about like how the amygdala like that anxious brain once you like can name the emotion it can calm down because it's like your brain is almost like in search of it's like a computer trying to search like what is that feeling mm -hmm. once you can name and label that feeling it helps calm it down mm. and i can't even label that feeling because there aren't words that can even mm -hmm. like express like even begin to express like how i'm how I'm feeling. I do find it easier actually. So I generally find it easier to express myself in English, but um, while I was home, I like wrote a poem just for myself. Oh well, no, no one needs to read it in Arabic <laughs> because I'm like, this feels like the place where I can express these type of traumatic feelings versus like in English. Um, like it almost feels like my Western side is like the reason that like my, my Arabic side is feeling this mm -hmm. way. So it's like, right. let me express myself in the language that uh, is being oppressed, if that makes sense. Have you done comedy in Arabic? Um, only a couple of times. It was awkward as hell. Why? Because I don't, exp it's, it's a totally different type of humor that right. I can like be funny in Arabic off the cuff and like just joking around yeah. in the way, like Arabs are very sarcastic, mm. super sarcastic and, I, and dry and like, um, so that's easy to do but to actually try to write a joke i feel like the structure i don't know it, it works differently mm -hmm. I'm, i haven't really like i want to try more and and see because it'd be interesting as a good challenge for myself to to do jokes in arabic well here's the other thing part of my comedy or a lot a big part of it is talking about the fish out of water experience of exactly. growing up palestinian in alabama yeah. the cross-cultural thing and yeah that wouldn't work we wouldn't did work in arabic. yeah because they're like totally. but you're here yeah what? but if i maybe if i shit on alabama they would still like laugh at that yes um i think that's universal that's universal <laughs> that's the universal language <laughs> shitting on alabama we can all agree that's what brings people together you that's know that's right that's actually the the state yeah that's logo. the <laughs> uh, shitting on yeah Alabama. Bringing people together through the hatred, a mutual hatred of us. <laughs> Except oh, no. really it's what they kind of do to other people. So. They, I bet you they're nice there, though. They really are nice. Yeah. Um, but it's hard to know when it's genuine. Like, are oh, you nice and racist? Or are you just like, you know, I'd rather you be real to my face. than Rude and racist? Yeah. I'd rather you be rude and honest 
than fake nice. I don't know. Are you sure? This is a good conversation because I feel like when you don't know a person, I I feel like rudeness is very intimate. You know what I mean? Like, I'm not going to be rude to you if I don't know you. I guess maybe not. Okay. Like, if you're racist, I'd rather you know and not hide it behind niceties. Yes. That's it. You don't yes. have to be rude to me if you're racist, yeah, they regardless. They Shazam for racist. Right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you're like, you walk into a room and it's like, murr, 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 exactly. Murr, murr. It's like, that's what I mean. Because yeah. then you don't know what you're dealing with. You're Ooh, like, they should register what? as racist. Oh, they should be like, I mean, there's a voters. Democrat, re- Republican. I racist. mean, some of these are, yeah. <laughs> some of them overlap. Are redundant. Yeah. Well, All now them, you don't now know everyone. anymore. Exactly. It now everyone anybody. overlaps. Yeah, we said it. <laughs> I feel like not a lot of hopefully racists are listening Listen to, to an immigrant podcast. Oh, I think they do for research. For <laughs> no, I just registered for the first time because I only became a citizen two years ago. Congrats! Are we congratulating each other on that? It feels intrusive that you have to register for one or the other party. It feels like what's yeah. the point of? The thing being, uh, how do you say? It? Yes. Yeah. If I have to register yeah. beforehand, yeah. then you know what I'm going to vote yeah. for, you fucks. Yeah. What the hell is that? You register the opposite and then oh, go vote. Is that what people do? No, I don't Fuck, think so. I fucked it up. I felt I don't very think so. uncomfortable. I, or you can go independent or Green Party or, in, you know, just do something green different. Green Party. I don't what know. do I look like? I don't shave my armpits. <laughs> <laughs> no, but um, it felt wrong. I, I felt. I didn't like it's, it. Yeah, it's fucked up. Um, it felt very controlling. You don't even have to do that in Germany, which is like such a police police. Yeah, I don't like that either. And also, if it's public, everybody can see it. Your voter registration. What do you mean if it's public? When are the when like, is it public? I don't know. Someone like sent me a a threat on that I reported on Saturday. Oh to, no. Uh, and then with. Somebody from my Instagram sent me their voter registration and had their name and address and that they voted Republican. Surprise. Um, they sent you their voter like registration? To show, well, I was like, let's report this guy. And okay. we did. And then someone sent me his like name, address, oh. all that stuff, which, yeah, guys, Yikes. be careful. Oh, if you, yeah. Oh my God. I'm just going to say people are getting doxxed and stuff. So just be careful with your info out there. I are don't like that. Are you getting a lot of threats and stuff? A lot of harassment? I mean, not like... Like I mean, just the just a healthy amount, you know, just a regular amount <laughs> oh of God. of harassment. But I don't mind the people. Not that I don't mind, like the people who are just like being psychos and calling me names. But when you start threatening me and my family, that's when I'm like, I'm reporting you to that. And this guy had his real name on there, had his LinkedIn. He like took it down eventually because everyone reported him i reported him on like the fbi like website i was like hey i'm reporting you to the fbi i found his address too i like put, posted all that on the fbi like whatever i didn't put my name because um i mean sorry my address because like i don't want my shit out there but uh people are stupid i'm like if you're gonna you know threaten somebody at least like do it <laughs> don't threaten anybody but like don't be you're also an idiot because you put your real shit out there i saw his linkedin like i saw everything i saw where he worked um when she got fired from a vape shop i think surprise like <laughs> shocking right so i was like is this even worth like i was about to call them and then oh i was like God. wait he doesn't even work there anymore he like can't fired hold up from a vape he's from shop. florida oh fuck i put him on shocker. blast shocker right and then he was trying to like backtrack but i'm like fuck you i'm reporting you to the fbi and then he was like that wasn't a threat what i think is so Mm. fucking crazy too is that like why is war something that just like is it it, like it's treated as if it's like inevitable or like as if like that's not something we should get rid of right like why can't we progress past that it's so barbaric yeah why is that just like and then they talk about like well when you're carrying out this type of mission this number of casualties is acceptable what the fuck yeah that's and if they're just calculating it like but if any of those people were your family that would not be one life you would like think about yeah i just think about how like when somebody's lost one person in their life and how it takes them their whole life they don't get over or move on from that 
how well, but can the, you sit and watch? Right. And the it's people hard. making the decisions that say, no, we are not saying these people's lives are, are worthless, but you are treating them that way. Because if that was your family there, you would not say 50 to 100 casual, civilian casualties yeah. is acceptable because you'd be like, that's my family. No. Well, you know? I, I, there's a book about this that I have. I forget the exact title, but something about. Uh, how all world leaders and CEOs are psychopaths or yes. sociopaths. So I know there's like a difference. Mein Kampf? Mein no, <laughs> <laughs> no, it's like the something ugh, I forgot what it was, but I I have it at home. But it's uh, um, not mind conf. <laughs> sociopaths. <laughs> I have it at home. I know there's my there's, bed. <laughs> there's rumors. <laughs> um, but basically it makes sense to me that all these like billionaires i'm not saying that they're necessarily like like ceos and all of that like they might not uh be like violent like serial killers can be sociopaths and psychopaths right but um they might just lack empathy yes. need power yes. money so to me that actually makes so much sense what kind of person wants to have that much power and 100%. money you're a sociopath yes i agree no normal agree. person who has empathy wants and that. feeling and wants to be a part of community wants to be up here and rule over totally. other people like yes. that by definition you're a sociopath yes Look at Arnold Schwarzenegger. Yeah. <laughs> the power. Like, look no, at how, but seriously, I yeah. think you're 100% right. 100% true. I think that's totally true because you don't get there without wanting to get there. You right. don't. You know? right. So you have to make active decisions in your life that get you there. Exactly. And um, sacrifice things to get you there. And so, yes, I agree with you 100%. And to be able to be in that position of power to turn yep. off your feelings and uh, I don't think they have feelings to turn off to be able to see that by your own doing people are getting killed. Yes. And you can live with yourself. You can live with yourself. Even, You're a sociopath. Let's, even, let's even go one like step below that. Even just seeing people are getting exploited so you can right. have more money. Even right. People are not right. having health care so right. you can fucking be driven around and an escalate. It's you like you're I mean? psychotic. Like, psychotic. 100%. You're not an empathetic person. You no. don't feel that you are a human like you believe in human equality. Right. Like I ran over a squirrel like 15 years ago and I by accident and I still haven't gotten over it. And I'm oh like, because I came God, back and I it was like, squirrels. I know, and I it was never really get over cute. It. Yes. And I just remember its little face. It was like, because I like, I was dry, I was in Alabama, I was like driving to the gym and then I thought I hit something and I was like, I don't see anything. And then on the way back, I saw this little squirrel on its back, just like, I like all the, like cute. You would have a little KKK hat on. <laughs> <laughs> in that case, it'd be fine. No, this was a good squirrel, I think. It was a um, oh, no. And then it was in a black neighborhood, so he was a good squirrel, I think. Oh, maybe. I don't know. He did not have a hat, so I think. <laughs> oh, no. But I, yeah, I get it. I swallowed a pebble once because I felt bad for it. What? A yeah. pebble? A pebble. What is a pebble? Like a little rock? Yeah. What do you, what do you mean you felt bad for it? <laughs> <What>? I, <don't, laughs> I was like a like, rock. I was like, I, I must be missing. I think I have to go. I think I'm, yeah. Ooh. I, I saw the pebble and I. I felt bad for it. Then I made a pact with it. <laughs> Were you on mushrooms? No. It's not a fruity like pebble. 12. Not a not the cereal. Just like a an I actual. I formed a bond with the pebble. Did it come out? I, I mean, it must have. I hope so. <laughs> I don't remember it coming out. This definitely <gasps> seems like something you do on mushrooms. No, <laughs> not I was that 12. I would know. I was twelve. Um, no, no, I was twelve. 12. That's so fun. So like saying, the empathy. So you're like, yes, yeah, I empathize with the pebble. OK, OK. Yeah. Now I get it. I just I was like, <laughs> swallow right. I didn't get how swallowing it made it safe. No, you're right. Because then you just shot it out. I was toilet. 12. Yeah, I yeah. It I'm made sense. Saying, and you're 12. A bond. Yeah. OK. But I All right. Totally that part that. is. So you, you're capable of forming bonds and empathy. Yeah. Well, like, these leaders cannot. Exactly. All right, psychopaths. Alabama squirrel. All right. Well, um, we've come to the part of the podcast where I was going to ask you, if did you grow up with any cool idioms or anything like that? Can you think of any? I'm trying to think. Like, Do you have one? Give me an example. Um, a- do I have one? Well, I always use this one. My dad always told us that people with small earlobes have no talent. Oh. He made that up because he has big earlobes. That's funny. I have I have small earlobes, and uh, See, I'm, he's a, wrong. I'm offended. He's dead wrong. <laughs> That's an yeah. interesting one. Um, God, I always think of just like things that my mom says, like uh, just as guilt trippy things. Oh, 
like that that like guilt trippy idioms like my mom like there's like Arab women are so like my mom like the moms are like so dramatic mm. and she will like whenever she wanted to guilt trip us she'd be like in Arabic she'd be like I you don't got you guys don't care about me if you saw me laying down on the street you would just step right over me and she would say that all the time I was like relax I'll do the dishes like <laughs> oh Jesus my God. Christ that's it was like it was so a lot funny. of like that <laughs> yeah that's dramatic uh we must play the poll questionnaire Athir Yacoub are you ready I'm ready okay if you were the president of the United States of America what American food would you ban oh Sloppy Joes, they just oh, look disgusting. Great I'm sorry. answer. Sloppy Joes. It's in the name. You. It's in the name. Get out of here, Sloppy Joe. Um, I love that. Gross. Totally, fully agree. If you could deport one American person, who would you deport? Just one. Just all <laughs> the presidents. Uh, uh, Biden right now, I guess. All right. Yeah. All right. See you later, Biden. Uh, if... You could add one face to Mount Rushmore. Whose face would you add? Ooh, I guess mine. <laughs> nice. <laughs> Is that narcissistic? <laughs> no, that's fine. I love that. Uh, what's the most Alabama thing you've ever done? I know I've done something. Just like jump in a lake. Okay. I, I guess. Like it. I like it. Yeah. Uh, what's the most Palestinian thing you've ever done? Um, Learn to do like the ululator and like... La, la, la. From, but I learned it from YouTube. <laughs> so that cancels it out. But, um, cool. Yeah. I love it. What's your favorite Arabic word? Khara means shit. And it's just satisfying because you got the kha in there kha. and like khara. Yeah. <laughs> I love that. Okay, last question. Probably the most important question. Ethereum Yacoub, do you know how I can meet David Hasselhoff? <gasps> Yes. No. <laughs> Match. He's actually right. <laughs> yeah. a, do you want to? I'm not sure. I feel like you could. I feel you like really I could. Shouldn't. You're probably like two like everybody says degrees that. away from him. But it has not happened. Um, I feel like maybe I shouldn't. Yeah. Don't you meet know? your heroes. If yeah. He is your hero. I don't know. Whose hero is he not? Um, <laughs> uh, yeah, I feel like I maybe I shouldn't. I don't know. I kind of do. I want to. I hear he's tall. Okay. Yeah. Well, there's that. There's that. Exactly. You can make this happen. He would. Pro he's probably out there. He would like die if he knew that you wanted to meet but him. I, oh, okay. I don't think that's David. Call die. in. <laughs> call in, Mr. Hasselhoff. This young lady wants to see you. He would lose his shit. Really? Wow. I feel like that's the best answer anybody's ever gotten. You're the only person that believes in me this much. You can make it out. I'm saying he would be the one psyched to meet oh, you. Oh, that's so nice. Athir, where can people find you online? Um, you can follow me on Instagram at Athir Yakub and just go to my website ethereyakub.com for upcoming shows and there's a link on there for my album it's called denied entry you can stream it anywhere you get music and podcasts yes please listen to ethere's album follow ethere uh check out everything ethere does uh dm her only nice things um and yes please please reach out to her send her your love and uh and all the good stuff Thank you so much for listening today. Thank you to Mike Albanese. The best and the Woo! best. We're in a new studio. Oh, shit. We're going Hollywood. We're going to get an Emmy. We're going to get a Golden Globe. Okay, I don't know what just happened. Uh, I'm excited. This is exciting. We're going big time, people. Thank you to all the patrons. Thank you so much. You know who you are. Lumi JT, Gio, Joe, Wesley, Do Douchebag Steve, you're the best. We love you so much, Douchebag Steve. Everybody else, um, thank you so much for listening. I love you so much. We'll be back next week. Goodbye.